Hi everyone and welcome to episode 6 in our Shopkeeper series. In this episode we're carrying on from where we left off last time where we got the player to purchase items from the shop. What we'll be doing in this episode is creating the player inventory and showing that onto the screen so we can see the items the player has bought. So for this we're going to create a player inventory. So I'm going to do it pretty much exactly the same as the Shopkeeper one i.e. with the character model on the right hand side and then the slots on the left. So for that, I'm just going to duplicate my shopkeeper UI widget. So duplicate that into player inventory underscore UI. We also need to duplicate our shopkeep item UI, the slot. So here I'm going to duplicate that and call that player inventory slot underscore UI. So now I've got these two duplicates from our shopkeeper. Let's go first of all into our player inventory UI. Change the text to say player inventory rather than shopkeeper for obvious reasons. Um, we're still going to keep the text block here to show how much money the player has. And we're then going to go into the graph. So the graph is going to change only slightly. And we're going to change two things. We're going to change the fetch item and the widget we're creating. So the widget we want to create is going to be the player slot. So let's create, uh, go into our player slot. And the thing we need to change on here is rather than using cost and displaying it there, we're going to display the quantity the player has. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to remove cost from our widget. And then I'm going to add a text field to our button and overlay we've got going on here. So we need it to overlay the text onto the image. So let's wrap that button up. So right click, wrap with overlay. And the overlay and the button, uh, sorry, the button we want to spread fully. So change it to fill the whole entire alignment. And also in the overlay, we need some text. So let's drag some text into it, like so. And this text is going to be aligned to the top uh, right. So change it to horizontally aligned to the right and to the top. And the text value here will be changing to like naught, for example, uh, by default. But we will make that change based on the slot we have. So I'm going to keep it as white because the image is going to change other than white here. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to rename my text here to be quantity. And we'll call it quantity text and tick the is variable box. Click compile and then go to your graph. Then you get some errors because the cost doesn't exist anymore. So simply just delete those nodes. And the cost we want it to be, uh, not cost, the quantity text, we're gonna drag that out and replace what we had there. So this one's gonna be set text and that will be left blank because that's making it invisible. And at the end here, where we set it all up, we're going to drag the quantity text out again and set text. And this will come from a variable. So the variable we haven't made yet. So go to new variable, call it quantity. And that would be an integer. And we're going to drag that out and choose get and plug that into your in text. So now it's going to generate the text for this quantity value. We need that quantity value to be exposed so we can add a value to it as we're making it. So tick the editable tick box and the expose on spawn tick box and click compile. We're done with the slot so we can close that up. So back on your player inventory UI, where we create the new widgets for the individual slots, we're gonna change the class to your player inventory slot UI. And now you see quantity appears as an input. What we're going to do here is get the input, uh, the quantity from the fetch item. So double click on fetch item to open it up. So the difference here is we're not using the shopkeeper NPC to get the inventory. So we can close that. We're going to get the player character out. And then from the player character, we're going to get their inventory component. And then from there, we have access to the inventory. So get inventory map. And it is a map. So there are some slight differences. 
The first difference is that we need to get the keys and which are basically all the item IDs. So type in keys and this will give you an array of all the different keys that are on that map. And in our case, in this project, that's a list of all the item IDs that the player currently has. So this array here can go into the is valid index. So the index will look for a valid key. So if the index is say three, but only have two items, this is going to turn false and carry on where we left off. This can now go into a branch as normal. Now to get the actual value from the map, we're going to drag the, from the map here and do find. And the find is going to come from an index in here. An index is going to be the get from our keys. So the get will now go into find rather than the item ID. Because this get is now getting the item ID to find the, um, the quantity. So the get here is the item ID and this one is the quantity. So, so that could be still plugged into there. So we need to add the quantity as our output. So click on the return node and add a new output for quantity. And change that to int. And plug your find into there. This find is finding the value matching the key. So this get is getting the item ID and the find is finding the value associated to that item ID. And we're getting it into our output. Click compile and let's go back to our event graph. So the error we're getting is this bind event. That's because we no longer have to click on the button to spend money. So we can delete all of this and our bind event. Plug it in like so. Our quantity can also be plugged into now our create, uh, create slot widget and then we click compile and we're done here. Okay, so we can close that. So now we've got that going, we now need to tell the player character to open up that uh, UI. So we're going to click on our player character here and go edit third person character. In our viewport, we're going to add a new child actor component. So type in child actor. I'm going to call this inventory camera. And then with it selected on the right hand side, you can choose which child actor it's going to be. And quite simply, it's just going to be a camera actor. Inside your viewport, you should now be able to position that camera where you want it to be. So roughly there will do me just fine. Click compile and go into your event graph. So in the event graph, we need to make a new input to open up our inventory. So go to edit project settings. And in your input settings on the left hand side, we're going to go and add a new action mapping. So click on the plus icon to add a new action mapping. This is going to be called inventory. And we're going to choose the button for the tab key. And we can close that down and go back to our player character. And then now if you search for inventory, you'll see there's now an action event for inventory. This will, so this event will occur when we push the tab key. When we do that, we want to tell it to switch to the inventory camera. To do that, we need to get the player controller and tell it to set the view target with a blend. When it does that, it needs a new view target. So drag your inventory camera child actor out from the component list, and then from there, get child actor. And then from that, you can plug that straight into new view target. I'm gonna set a blend time of 0.5 seconds. So it's quite quick. And after that, that's when we'll do all the changing of the settings and showing of the widget. So let's start off with showing the widget. So I'm gonna go create widget. And we're gonna choose the player inventory UI. And from there, we need to go from the return value here and add to viewport. From that, we need to get the player controller and tell the player controller to set the input mode to UI. And 
and we're going to tell the mouse cursor to show. So set show mouse cursor to be true. We compile and let's have a look at what we've got. So I push play and I push tab, you'll switch to the player inventory view. I can click on exit shop and it will return to the thing. We just need to change that text so it doesn't say exit shop. So let's go into our inventory uh, shop. Let's buy two pieces of gunpowder next to it and have a look at our inventory. Now notice it now still says one as a quantity in the corner here. So obviously that's not correct because I just bought two of them. So let's have a look at how we fix that. So this bug exists on our inventory component on the add to inventory node. The reason why it's breaking is because we're telling it to add one to the list. And when you add a item to a key to your map, it, if it already exists, it overwrites it with a new value. In this case, it'll just keep adding one to it. So what we need to do is tell it to first of all have a look and see if the item exists. If it does, add that quantity onto the existing quantity and then set it back to add. So let's break that down. So item ID, we're going to go and choose find in our inventory map. And this gives us a boolean whether or not it finds it or not. Put that into branch. So if it's true, let's just move this all that way. If it's true, it means it's found it and exists. And this find has now got that value out. So we want to drag quantity from our inputs and add an integer plus integer. And you connect up to the find. So now we've got the new quantity in this node here. We now need to set that back to the add. So drag this back up to where we saw the true. And we're going to tell it to add a uh, item ID for this. So the first one is item ID. So get item ID. And the second one is this new plus we got here. So that's it on true. If it's on false, i.e. it's a brand new input, we're going to copy what we got here for the add and paste that in. And we're going to just plug in the quantity as the other input. And that can connect to the same return node if you wish. Click compile, and we're done there. Now let's test it out. Followed by two barrels, next it, and push my inventory button. You now see the number two appears in the corner. Let's now buy something else. Let's buy a pumpkin and another barrel and another pumpkin. Exit the shop, inventory. You can see now I've got three barrels and two pumpkins. And I've got 110 gold left. The rest left is just change the text to exit shop and we're done. So on exit shop, we're going to go to the player inventory UI and just change the text on there to say exit inventory. And now we are done. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or queries, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next episode or any other videos that we put out. If you want to see that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanoli. Donating just $1 per month will get you access to the new videos before anyone else sees them on YouTube. That includes uh, loads of videos and loads of extra content in our Discord and behind the scenes footage as well. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.